All right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called Medea. 1969. Oh, yeah, when you get uh, ancient Greek mythology mixed with Pierre Paolo Pasolini, the communist creep, the gay atheist guy. You know it's going to be good. Just like Oedipus. <clears throat> I love this film. I gave it five out of five stars. It's like El Topo meets Jason and the Argonauts. It's the more realistic version of Jason and the Argonauts, I guess. But it's got the uh, Greek tragedy at, at the end, which is pretty cool. They play a trick ending where they repeat the same scene twice, and you think, yeah. did somebody just survive a fire? And uh, which is magic doesn't really work. But then she kind of doubles up on it by repeating the same scene with a different ending. I've never seen that used in a film before, but I thought it was very clever. It had me scratching my head for a while. Anyways, um, Jason is uh, is bring, being uh, brought up by this senator, I guess. And um, when Jason grows up, he's supposed to uh, get the throne back from his uncle who usurped it from him. So his uncle said, yeah, you can have the throne back if you get the Golden Fleece. Then the senator put some kind of magic spell on Medea. And uh, by the way, Pasolini is one sick fuck. He's got naked boys all over the place in this one. That's why it reminded me of El Topo. Anyways, the, um, oh, and then after you see the naked boy, the uh, naked Jason when he's like five or something, then, uh, yeah, I really burned my foot with tea today. Anyways, after that scene, you see the cruel barbarian society that Medea lives in. She's like the daughter of some sun god or something. I don't know. You have to re you have to understand Greek mythology to really follow the story here, because there's no narration, very little dialogue. Which is kind of cool, actually. Uh, the costumes are great. The sets are great. The uh, cinematography is great. And uh, a lot of shots of people from way back in the hall, at the end of the hall. You see these people at the other end. So pretty cool camera work. Um. The costumes are just incredible. It reminded me of Oedipus, Pasolini's other uh, Greek tragedy movie. I didn't make a movie out of Greek tragedy. I thought everything was written in poetic device, you know, ancient Greek, Hellenic, whatever. But um, Pasolini does the best job, in my opinion. Ironically, Pasolini did. Uh, the world according to St. Matthew, not that he believed in any of it, but he thought it was a great story. Uh, I reviewed that on YouTube also. I thought it was a great movie to tell the myth of uh, Jesus or the mythology in his mind. Anyways, so, so this crazy barbarian society that Medea lives in, they're just torturing this guy, 
they crucify him, hit him over the head, and then they let him go, fall to the ground, and they chop off his head and start eating him like uh, cannibals, start wiping his blood on bushes and stuff. Man, that was bizarre. How could anybody be so cruel? And Medea is supposed to be a sorcerer too because she's the daughter of the sun god. She's related to all these powerful people in her crazy city. So this senator ends up casting a spell on Medea. She's some kind of, she's played by some kind of opera singer, by the way, who is supposed to be uh, Aristotle Onassis' girlfriend. But uh, that all ended when Jackie Onassis married uh, Aristotle Onassis, or Jackie Kennedy, I should say. So getting back to the story, it's, it's kind of like a mirror image of the opera singer's own life, when you think about it. Um, the centaur cast a spell on her to, uh, to get together with Jason. As she steals the golden fleece from the temple. Uh, Jason just happens to bump into her thanks to the centaur, and um, and so they start uh, dry humping the off camera, of course. There's no nudity in this and unless uh, you count the, the uh, four naked boys in this, or there's three. Anyways. Um, so they're humping each other. They have two sons. Uh, the king goes back on his word, doesn't give, even though uh, Jason gave him the golden fleece, like he said. Yeah, he kept, Jason kept his part of the bargain, but the king said, oh, sorry, I'm king, so fuck you. And, uh, so Jason said, yeah, whatever, you can have this worthless fleece. It doesn't do anything anyway. It doesn't give you more power. So he goes to Corinth, where some king offers his daughter to him. This is 10 years later, um, towards the end of the movie. Um, Dia gets pissed. She wants to put a curse or a magic spell. She's coming up with some kind of sorceress. So she wants to put a magic spell on everybody. And that's where the movie starts getting confusing. Because you don't, you don't know why two people were burned to death, presumably, and then all of a sudden they're back in the next scene. There's no explanation given unless you sit through until the end. And even that part has a lot of Unanswered questions, for instance. Did the sorceress cast a spell that <clears throat> repeated similar scene twice? Like a never-ending nightmare type of recurring nightmare type of thing? Where the two victims burn in the first scene and then they jump over a cliff? In the second scene, from the same curse? I don't know. I was just guessing, but I guess the witch wanted to double up her, uh, her sorcery, make it repeat the same kind of uh, revenge twice, like Groundhog Day or something. You know, you wake up in the morning, and you're on fire. Then you wake up the next morning and you're jumping off a cliff. I didn't understand how that was possible, but 
I guess she made it possible. She brought them back to life, maybe. And then she, she uh, killed them again. That sounds like something that Angelique would think of, you know, that, um, that dream sequence that she did. Where each person op opens the door to a more terrifying nightmare. And the last person who opens the door dies. That's what it reminded me of. Anyway, cool flick shot and color, of course. Um, it looks like really authentic um, outfits they were wearing. The gear they were wearing looked like, uh, you know, something that really was from 2,000 years ago, similar to Oedipus. Anyway. The people in Corinth looked more advanced, like they were uh, kind of uh, modern type people. So the, the king said, threatens to uh, exile the sorceress Medea when she's in Corinth because he doesn't trust her. He knows that she's got some kind of special powers. But, alas, he's too late because um, he says that she can stay for a while to uh, take care of the, the two sons. They talk about two sons, but there are only, there are three boys. So I don't know where the other boy came from. But maybe there are three sons instead of two sons in this movie. I know in the play there are two sons. Is it the play or the, the poem? I don't know. This is a really old Greek tragedy. I've never read it before, even though I took um, ancient Greek history in college. It was it ancient Greek literature? I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was ancient Greek literature. That was a cool class. We got to read the Iliad and the Odyssey, of course. Some of the other tragedies. Anyways. I have a pretty decent date with the uh, with the fob, thirty-year-old fob from uh, Sichuan, China. I guess. Oh, this blister is still popping out water and stuff. Anyways. Yeah, she's pretty decent. She wants to go out. Uh, her English thing wasn't too good, but she looked good in those tight shorts and the uh, the uh, pseudo cleavage shirt uh, was showing her rather flat chest. Not too much cleavage there. But uh, that was pretty cool. I got to see her chest anyway. She's got dark skin and short hair, kind of uh, crooked teeth, but white teeth. She's only 30. You know, she doesn't have that great, that great teeth that a 40 year old Chinese woman has. And she shaves her armpits and her legs because she's so young. She thinks hairy armpits on women are disgusting. Um, I guess she's been uh, 
keeping the razor business going by uh, adopting some U.S. type of uh, hygiene stuff. Um, my ex-girlfriend said it was cleaner to shave, but I don't know if that's true. I certainly, I certainly wouldn't allow my, my kids to get uh, circumcised. That's just pure barbarism, in my opinion. Mutilation of uh, kids' genitals? <laughs> You're kidding me? I would never allow that on my kids. Anyway, I got it done, so I'm cut. But I wouldn't impose that on my kids. Uh, yeah, the movie's great. Uh, like I said, you, you, uh, it's hard to tell who, what, when, where, and how in this movie because the scenes move kind of fast. You know, you'll be in one city, one scene, and another city, the next scene. Um, I think it's more realistic than Jason and the Argonauts, which is kind of a cartoonish, uh, very, what's his name, you know, clay model kind of, uh, and these uh, modern technology that didn't exist in ancient Greece. Like these um, elaborate boats. The boat in this movie is just a raft, pretty much. It's not even a boat. So there's that. I love the gritty realism, especially the cannibal scene kind of freaked me out. Not to mention all the naked boys. <laughs> I don't know why that's necessary, but uh, apparently Joe Roski thought it was necessary in El Topo, so I'll let you be the judge if you're into that kind of thing. <coughs> Anyways. Uh, overall, I gave a five out of five stars, like I said. Uh, I think Pasolini is the best art, art house director by far. Especially stuff from the, well, really, all, most of his stuff is, is great. Um, I don't think there's a single movie that I dislike that he made, um, could be, might have been one movie, but overall I think he's a great director. Most of his kind of miss. Unlike some of these other art house directors who are uh, your early stuff for hits and the later stuff for misses. Or Goudard, who's just an incompetent, conceited director to begin with. So I was glad that I got a chance to see this along with um, Bulldog Drums Bright. I knew I was going to love both movies. And not because it has naked boys in it either. I just thought it was uh, had good acting. I mean, the, the opera star was right on the money. Her her facial expressions were great, and her eyes are kind of uh, penetrating, like Barbara Steele in Black Sunday. Then there are the sets, of course, and the costumes, and the cinematography. Um, 
the lack of narration, clear story, hardly any dialogue. And, and there's this weird kind of noise soundtrack. It's almost like listening to Throbbing Gristle in 1971. Or, uh, sorry, 1969. I mean, uh, Pasolini was definitely an innovator. Uh, he was, the music in it, or the noise in his, in his movies, uh, uh, are like 10 years ahead of its time. I and mean, you didn't hear this kind of stuff until maybe 1978. So whoever did the, uh, the weird kind of uh, music or noise in this, definitely deserves a high five or a, a salute. I don't know if it was Pasolini's choice to do this kind of music, but it's great. I loved it. Anytime something weird is happening, they play this noise and it's just super grating on your nerves. It adds to the effect of the of the shock of watching uh, human sacrifice and cannibalism. So that's about all I have to say about this flip. Um, good thing my Chinese date likes Netflix too. Although she, uh, she's not doing it because she enjoys watching mo movies per se. I think she enjoys hiking more. But, uh, she does it to learn English. Um, so that's pretty smart. I mean, my, uh, I used to have a uh, boarder from Stanford at, at my grandma's house. He would watch... Uh, Una Vision, or whatever it's called, the Spanish channel, so that he could practice his Spanish. So that's a pretty good idea. She's only been here for three months, like I said. So her English is quite bad. She has trouble thinking of words that, um, you know, Chinese words in her head, translating them into English. Anyways. That's the long end and the short end of it. Unfortunately, my date only lasted one hour, but uh, i take her to dinner on Saturday night. Hopefully, uh, she won't flake. And then uh, we go hiking movies next Saturday. That sounds like uh, the most promising date that I've had in a long time. Hope she doesn't uh, chicken out or flick out on me, but um, we'll see. She she seems like a nice girl. But I don't think she's gonna uh, I don't think she's gonna flake on me Monday night. But then again, um, never know. So. Wish me luck, players.